The Queen's Boulevard Viaduct, opened in 1916, is a key piece of infrastructure in the Sunnyside neighbourhood of Queens, New York. It was built to span the Sunnyside Yard, an enormous rail yard owned by the Long Island Railroad, allowing Queens Boulevard to connect neighbourhoods across the borough more seamlessly. By overcoming the geographic and logistical challenge of the rail yard, the viaduct was instrumental in improving transportation, and it played a pivotal role in the expansion of Queens, helping to bridge its western and eastern parts. At the time of its construction, the Sunnyside Yard was one of the largest rail hubs in the country, serving as a critical point for freight and passenger traffic. The yard's sprawling rail tracks were a major obstacle to surface transportation, and the growing borough of Queens needed a solution to link its neighbourhoods without disrupting the yard's operations. The viaduct provided that solution, elevating Queens Boulevard above the rail yard and allowing vehicles, streetcars and pedestrians to move freely without interference from train traffic below. The infrastructure was essential in integrating Sunnyside and surrounding areas with the rest of Queens and beyond. The viaduct was built as a robust steel structure, characteristic of the early 20th century engineering, and it was designed to handle the increasing volume of traffic that came with the borough's rapid development. In addition to improving vehicular flow, the viaduct was also a key route for streetcars that connected various parts of Queens, and eventually it became an integral part of the growing subway network. The section of the viaduct we focus on today marks the early stages of the Seven Trains subway extension, a project that would expand the line to Main Street in Flushing over the next decade. Today, the 7 train remains the only subway line in Northern Queens running east to west, making it a vital transportation corridor for commuters. The section we're examining is a 14 block stretch of elevated track, notable for being made from concrete and iron. A unique choice for elevated subway lines, which were typically constructed from steel alone. This distinctive design was intentional, as the structure was meant to serve not only as a functional bridge, but also as a gateway to Queens, with its concrete arches and iron elements lending a sense of grandeur and civic pride. The viaduct represents the era of rapid urbanization that Queens underwent in the early 20th century. Infrastructure projects like this were crucial to integrating the borough into the greater New York City network after the 1898 consolidation. The opening of the viaduct coincided with a boom in residential and commercial development, driven by the expansion of the transportation networks, such as new subway lines and roadways. The viaduct helped connect burgeoning neighbourhoods like Sunnyside, Woodside, Jackson Heights and Flushing, making it easier for people to move into and out of the borough for work, shopping and recreation. While the viaduct has seen several upgrades and renovations over the years to accommodate growing traffic, it remains a crucial component of Queen's transportation network. Its role in facilitating easier access to new developments was a key factor in Queens Boulevard becoming one of the busiest thoroughfares in the borough. However, this same success led to Queens Boulevard's darker nickname, the Boulevard of Death, a reference to the dangerous intersections and high volume of accidents in later decades as the boulevard became overwhelmed by traffic.
Today, the concrete section of the viaduct that I'm featuring in this video shows its age. For over 30 years, the structure has displayed signs of wear, which is understandable given that it is now over a century old. In the 1990s, a major renovation addressed the deteriorating concrete facade with engineers predicting that the repairs would last another 50 years. Despite these efforts, persistent issues remain. Cracks are visible throughout the structure and occasional chunks of concrete fall, ranging from small pieces to larger, more concerning sections. While this concrete viaduct may hold up for another 20 years, by then it will be around 130 years old and the demand on the subway line will only have increased. This one mile stretch is just a small portion of the Southern Line, which spans about six and a half miles in Queens alone. Even when this section requires replacement, it could lead to significant disruptions, possibly splitting the Southern Line into two disconnected segments served by shuttle buses during construction. The logistics of such a large-scale project would undoubtedly be complex, and it's hard to predict how long it might take. Thankfully, that's a future I probably won't be around to witness. I hope you enjoyed today's story. If you did, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. It really helps small channels like mine. And if you enjoy discovering unique stories about Brooklyn and Queens, consider subscribing. I've got a library of video stories waiting for you to explore.